the only Claude Daniel Fabien. CD in the house. What's up, CD? And I have my lovely bride, the only one who can have my heart on this side of eternity in the flesh until I see Jesus before me who has me in his heart and by the spirit. Wow, my that's bride, really deep. It is deep. And you're in a deep place in my heart. Oh, my goodness. My only wife. Melody Fabian. Hello, everyone. <laughs> you know, I think you're getting deep because we're going to get deep today. Yo, we're about to get so <laughs> into the waters. <laughs> but we're not going to be so deep that Jesus swims past us. Okay. <laughs> Walks past us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But we're, we're going to go. We're going to go deep today. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about spiritual warfare. I said it. We're going to talk about warring in the spirit. Hmm. It is a topic that is becoming more needed. Um, yes. It's becoming more popular. Um, it, it's something that is wooey wooey for some people. Like it's ethereal. It's in the air. It's, it's scary for others. They don't talk about it too much. But we're getting many, many, many reports of people encountering strange things, increase mm. of yep. nightmares uh, with like added features when they wake and something grabbed them. There's stuff moving in people's homes. There's depression that's coming out of nowhere. There's just this distance they're feeling with God. There's this tension. It mm. feels like something has poured out and increased in the demonic. Yeah. And um, I think we should talk about it. Yeah. So. So needed. It's so needed. And mm -hmm. let's just go ahead and dive right in. What, what we're going to do is uh, we want to kind of address what is spiritual warfare, you know, why it's happening. How do we engage in it? How do we have the victory? How do we stay victorious? And so that's the direction we're going to go. And um, yeah. Yeah. So what, what is something that you have heard recently, my love, that has really, like, painted this picture? Um, I mean, it's just something I continue to see throughout my relationship with the Lord and the people that I minister to. Okay. Um, but somebody recently that I ministered to, she just kind of kept feeling very evil things happening in her house, um, eerie feelings, walks into her home, feels like depression and anxious anxiety. Um, even when I would visit, I would sense that too. Like in the house, like you. you yeah, walk I'm like outside, like normal. Inside, yo, it feels different. In like, here. I feel like there's a spirit of anxiety in this house, you know. Okay. But I never knew what that really was. Um, and she kept talking about this thing, and and then there was like literally things happening, you know, where. So not not just a feeling. Not just a feeling, but people getting hurt in the home. Like, oh wow, somebody tripped and got really hurt, and somebody spilled the hot water and they got burned like it was like man it just feels extra you know so it, it felt more than normal yes somebody could just say oh, they trip yeah and so long story short she gets her hair done and this lady who's doing her hair is super prophetic and while she's doing her hair she's like whoa i just saw a big old evil eye <laughs> and the lady's like what She's like, do you do you got some stuff in your house you need to get rid of? Wait, the the the, the hair. The lady's doing her hair. Where? At the salon. It, oh, so yeah. not even in the house. No. Just at the salon. She's at a salon. Okay. Okay, so she's like, I've been feeling crazy stuff in my house. Yeah. I don't know what this is, guys. So they're having a conversation. Yeah. And this the salon. No, the no, no. She she's just coming to the salon with all this in her mind. Okay. Doesn't she tell the salon. Anything no, like she didn't tell nothing. The, to the, the salon worker is just doing, her, doing hair. her thing. Yeah. And the salon worker out of the blue is like, whoa. Yeah. Snap. She's a Christian. She she's like doing her hair, and she says she says she saw this like evil eye in the spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, let me make sure I say that clearly. In <laughs> she the didn't spirit. like see some hidden tattoos. Like a vision. In the, her hair. She sees she a vision someone. of an eye. Okay. But it was like that evil eye. Yeah. Look. And she Malojo. said, Malejo. She goes, do you have, like, in your house, do you have some, like, evil eye stuff? And the lady's like, 
Yes. You know, because her daughter had brought like cups with evil eye and all this stuff. And she's like, I just sense there's things in your house. You need to clean your house. You need to clean your house. And she's like, oh, my God, I've been sensing that, too. And she's like, I have a word for you. I feel like it is time that you return to the Lord. And she was not what? quite close to the Lord in the season. She had kind of just pulled away. She's like, you need to go back to church. The Lord loves you. Like, she just started speaking. Come on. At her salon. Come on. Speaking over this woman. Being a witness in the salon. Yes. Get and that. so this woman, she just like, I do have stuff in my house. And she had these tarot cards from back in the day in her house. In that moment, when she said, you need to get stuff out of your house. That's the first thing that popped in her yes, mind. Yes. She the was like, cards. oh, snap. And, and, and when the salon woman said that she saw them out of the the, uh, she started the thinking eye, about a cup, eye. a cup in her cupboard from her daughter that she had brought in the house. So, so she's making immediate connections. <laughs> yes. Okay. And she's like, and I got this one thing that I got at this Renaissance fair. You know, it was like a little fairy thing. And I got that, you know, like she started thinking. So now of she's thinking like it's like it opened up the floodgates. Connecting gates. the dots. Yes. And for how long has she been collecting these little trinkets? Years. Years. Yeah. And so, so, so something must have told her. That these little things are all connected. Are all connected to what she's feeling in her house, and these strange activities and feelings. Yes. Okay. So it was like get right with God and get all this crap out of your crib, mm. pretty much. Mm. And so she do, she does. She's like, she came to me. She's like, what do I do? You know, I'm like, get it out of your house. So y'all started having a conversation about it. Yeah, she's telling me the and whole thing. And you encouraged her to like, oh, ob like obey. Yes. Do it. Let's clean house. So. Is it was there any value to these things? Oh yeah, there was definitely value to them. Some some jewelry, some cups. And like um, sentimental but value, I, value. Not to sentimental, somebody? just more like she goes, I've been, I've kept these tarot cards and I don't know why. So it was more I don't like even, a draw, like a there was like a, a draw, like yeah. a power to them. Mm. And she said, But I always felt when I say just throw them away, it was like, What if you need them one day? This back door opened still. And she was like, man, this is crazy. Wow. So we threw everything away. We blessed the house. We anointed the home with oil. If you don't know what that means, basically you pray over anointing oil. You pray over this oil and say, God, I anoint my home. I break every stronghold. And like actually dip your finger and run Pull it over oil. The, the threshold of your door or on the door and walls. And just say, God, I dedicate Some my house to you. Some people would think that's pretty weird. And yeah. That's a whole nother podcast. So that's why we're having <laughs> this conversation today called spiritual warfare. Yes. Yeah, so, so spiritual warfare can, can come in different forms. Okay. It can come in the whole like weird stuff in the house, bad dreams, but it also can come in like demonic thoughts that are really taking people off track. Mm -hmm. Thoughts like, man, man, our marriage is rough. Maybe we need to, you know, step outside of it. Okay. I'm hearing more and more about people who are straight swinging. Okay. Straight up inviting other couples into their marriage. But you're saying that some of these suggestions may not necessarily be people's own thoughts trying to search flesh, about new right. things. There's flesh. Right. There's 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 your so internal flesh, you mean like, uh, internal war, right? There's the internal war of your own flesh, your own desires. Okay. Your own sinful nature. Okay. And then we also have the world, right? Society. There's that war. But then there's a demonic war. So let's just let's define this a little bit better. So we talk about spiritual warfare. What is spiritual warfare? Well, we look at the term spiritual, talking about things of the spirit, right? So we're talking about war happening in a spirit realm, mm -hmm. and it affects you and me. Right. And this spirit realm consists of spiritual beings and we'll talk more about these different beings but basically there's a war going on and uh it's between light and darkness it's between light and darkness so <clears throat> powers of light kingdom of darkness kingdom of darkness and the kingdom are of light clashing with one another right okay they're so, against each other so that that's what we literally mean by spiritual warfare and we feel the effects of some of this stuff right so why is there spiritual warfare? Like, how do we conceptualize its origin? Why does, 
does how do how do we get somebody to understand this this is really existing this makes sense yeah because I, I feel like there's spiritual warfare whether you're a christian or not uh -huh. it's happening okay but you need to know whose side are you on okay so let's ask the question then why and and then identify why? this so so why is there spiritual warfare well for christians and we understand this as taught to us by the prophets and the apostles of the bible that uh, and Moses wrote all the way back in Genesis that when he created the world there was kind of just this unorderly place and he put it all into order the earth the skies the heavens everything is now in order six seven, days six days okay seventh day he rests enjoys it right and we get some details or some other accounts of uh, how God got into the, the, the making of Adam and Eve, the, the creation of humankind, al along with animals and everything else. And then with humankind, he makes them in their own image and likeness so that they would be representative of his holy kingdom of light in the spirit realm on the earth. Mm. So we are spiritual representations on earth of God on earth. Mm -hmm. God is spirit. Yeah. We are flesh or carnal or nature and we're on the earth and everything is good. Mm -hmm. God, it's all good. I mean, they're naked and unashamed. They're good. Yeah. But then we're introduced to this other character called the serpent and he comes in and he brings doubt to humankind about the goodness of God and convinces them to rebel against God by doing something he said not to do. So in this case, it's represented by a tree of knowledge of good and evil, and they take from the fruit of that tree what God said not to do. They eat of it. Their eyes become awakened. And now they are aware of what's wrong and what's bad by through experience. And sin enters and the world. And sin enters the world that disposition of disobedience and rebellion against a good God. So now we see some players. We see God is holy and just, and he is the king of heaven, and he is light. This serpent is representing and recognizing the, the, the originator for humankind and in the world of sin and darkness and death. Who is this serpent? So it's presented as this this snake but in the poetry of the hebrew they understand it to be um satan so this idea of satan the name in hebrew means the accuser or the adversary so he's an adversary against god and 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 being his images image bearers image bearers on mm -hmm. the earth representatives he's against us mm -hmm. So, so, so we have an enemy. So we have an enemy. So that goes to the next question. Who are the enemies of God? Right? So I just answered, why is there spiritual warfare? So we just explained. Spiritual war so from that day to today has been on. All of all of human humanity has been saturated with sin. They're corrupt and they're fallen. And there's this spiritual dark element also, and spiritual beings also that are so we have human humanity rebellious against God and you've got some divine beings or some spiritual beings that are in rebellion against God and they comprise they're against anything that's of God they're so, against anything that is of that the God wants to do that would be Ephesians so those, 6 so we have Ephesians 6 and it says so we answer who are our enemies right, right so right. Ephesians six twelve says that um, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers, so like worldly powers, over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Mm. So this is where the fight is taking place. This is who is comprised of the fight. These So what is a principality? What are these things? Well, these are just old archaic language for like, spiritual princes so god has a kingdom he's established various like governors or and watchers that they have their purposes or their roles and some of them have rebelled against god mm -hmm. they went the, the, the way that the old hebrews would say it they went the way of satan 
So you have this like this original re rebel, and then you've got these subsequent rebels, both human and divine. And so why do they come against us as Christians? Because because our purpose on the earth was to represent the goodness of heaven on earth. They want to thwart the things of God's, and they want to thwart the things that God has intended for earth. So they thwart us. They pervert us. What's, They're against what is us. Thwart? thwart means to change to, in a very perverted way, to corrupt or to destroy. Mm -hmm. So that's what we see in John right. chapter 10, right? right? That the enemy comes to steal, kill, kill and, and destroy. destroy. But Jesus said, so we're going to talk about who Jesus is. Jesus said, but I have come to bring life and life there abundantly. So if I jump to Genesis chapter 1 and we read, it says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And he has six days of let there, let, uh, and God said. In the gospel of John, one of Jesus' disciples, he, uh, students who followed him and learned his ways and continued the mission of revealing God on the earth through his very being, him being God. This is what he says about Jesus. He says, in the beginning, uh, that should cause anyone to read those same phrase, Genesis 1, in the beginning, was the word, okay? And the word was with God, okay? And the word was God. So God, who spoke everything into being, mm -hmm. who created the heavens and the earth, he's describing him, and he's giving them this name, this nickname or this title, the word of God. And he says, the word, he says, was in the, he says, was in the beginning with God. So now there's this relationship. He was God, but he was in the beginning with God. So we got this mysterious relationship between what sounds like two different beings, but they're the same. And then it says, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. So, so this, mm -hmm. this is the, the catalyst of all life, of all creation. And he says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. So we have a kingdom of darkness... And we have a kingdom of light. Jesus, who is the word of God. Mm, who is God. Who is God. Mm. Now, if you know the story of Jesus, he's born into humanity, bearing all the corruption, the thwartingness, everything that's happened through sin and lies and deception. He embodies that. But he himself is holy. Holy. Right. And he is light of men and he is life himself he and he is the king of heaven and then you have this cosmic battle happening so when i read in genesis i'm sorry ephesians these these principalities yeah. they're against the king himself so they've rebelled from their positions of authority and they're against him this is what we're fighting so we're born into a world where there's warfare going on right now it's kind of like The Matrix. If you've ever seen The Matrix 1999, The Matrix, basically there's this whole idea of people are being born into this world and they don't realize that there's actually this war going on around them. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening to us. So when we get <laughs> saved, when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, yeah. we are what we're called born again. His spirit, that uncorruptible spirit, the spirit of God himself, reborns us by the spirit, but we're still in the flesh, just mm -hmm. like Jesus was. Carrying all the sin, we're carrying whatever sin, yeah. but we're born, we're, we're, we're renewed in spirit. And we start to become aware of like the spirit realm. And Paul teaches us, okay, this awareness you're now having in the spirit realm, yeah. that's where all the war is going on. You see it playing out through the consequences on the earth. The lies and the deceptions, the wars and the fighting and the breaking up and the betrayals and the divorces and the, 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 the fighting and the, the death. But your battle is not against flesh and blood. People who are against the, the principles of the Bible, yeah. the, the issues of racism and abortion and, and uh, the issues with transgenderism, all these things, the, the people who are harboring these things, those are not your enemies. In fact, we might be able to say, those are victims. Hmm. Our enemies 
other principalities and the hosts of wickedness and spiritual realms. Mm -hmm. Satan and his demons. So scripture talks about how he influenced them to rebel as much as he had influenced humans to rebel. Mm. So he's kind of like he is the, the king of darkness. And that's what our war is against. So this is what spiritual warfare is. This is why it is. This is who our enemies are. So now that we understand this, the question is, well, then how do I wage war? How do I fight? Right. Well, who am I? I'm just a hu little human being. Yeah. What are we, yeah. What are we to do? Mm -hmm. Right? So when we think about the gospel, we see that the, the initial answer to the question, how do I fight, is that, well, the battle is not yours. You don't fight. Right. Jesus fought. Jesus fought. He died. Go ahead. Explain it. He resurrected. And he had power over death, right. power over the kingdom of darkness. Right. And he now ascends into heaven right. and says, you now go and make disciples. Right. And I've given you all authority. Come on, Matthew 28. Yes, I've given you authority. Right. And, so, and, and I think that's it right there. The enemy doesn't want you to know that you have authority. Right. So, so what Jesus does is he... Everybody at Jesus' time was expecting him to establish the kingdom of God by force. He's just going to whip the enemy. But he doesn't. He answers the question that's, that's a problem between us and God. Because remember, humanity rebelled. Mm -hmm. How is God going to build a kingdom of rebels? He's not. So he has to deal with that sin problem. So Jesus dies. Why does he die? As a perfect human... He dies for all humans' sins mm -hmm. as the perfect substitute. Mm -hmm. But being just, God has the right to raise Jesus as human body from the dead. He's spirit. God, Jesus is God. Right. But he raises the person of Jesus from the dead, and now he's this new creation. Mm -hmm. And then sits him on the throne of God. So there's a man in heaven right now. Mm. He's a man God, seated over all of those principalities, those cosmic powers that I was talking about, he has authority over every single one of them. Wow. So the first step in fighting mm. is identifying ourselves with Christ. We place our confidence of victory in Christ's victory. He disarmed all of the principalities. He disarmed Satan. Mm. He disarmed demons, their lies, their attempts to thwart or to pervert he completely ruined them because all we now have to do is say well i side with christ mm. that's that's really what salvation is about salvation is being presented with this information we gave you and then say make a choice right but then the uh, the second big part is not just i side with christ he's my lord R because if you're siding with christ he's the lord of all right so if he's Lord of all, you're saying, I believe this word that Jesus rose from the dead and I submit to him as king. Right. And he's my king and he has the right to tell me what to do. <laughs> if he's Lord, he gets to direct your life. Right. But he directs his, our lives by the spirit with gentleness and love, with direction and truth. And, and his total character is good. His total. And that's what the enemy's first weapon against us is oh yeah god's with god's withholding from you god's not good god's not good that's such a lie from the that's enemy. the first lie and that's that is how so so the weapon the enemy uses is lies so the kingdom of darkness operates by lies mm -hmm. the kingdom of light operates by truth yeah the difficulty is that lies sometimes feel and sound better than the truth does mm. The truth can hurt, but it will also set you free. Yeah. Lies will make you feel good while you're heading to destruction. Heading to hell. If, uh, if you went to the doctor and the doctor can see in the screen that you have cancer, but lies to you and say, you're going to be fine. Then you continue doing everything that you do, eating everything that you do, doing whatever inappropriate thing or, or uh, unhealthy thing or yeah. whatever it is that you do. And then you die. Or he can say, well, listen, you've got stage three cancer. Mm. It, we're going to have to see if we can just cut it out. So that's surgery. So I'm going to have to cut you. Mm -hmm. I got to go and get it. Yeah. 
or we could do radiation, whatever he's going to do. But the truth will set you free. Yes. So the first thing is identifying yourself with Christ. The second thing is believing the truth about yourself in Christ. Yes. So you're identified with <clears throat> Christ and you have authority in Christ. Because Matthew 28 that you're, that you're referencing, right? Matthew 28, 18 through 20. All authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. That's what he starts with. All, all authority, all authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. Mm. Go, therefore... And I have a friend, not a friend, a, a great uh, minister I love to listen to. His name is Derek Prince. He says, well, every time you see therefore, you got to ask, what is it there for? And he says that go therefore because of all the authority that was given to Jesus. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That baptism is a public display of your association and identity with God. Hmm. And... So because we said identity with God, right? Yeah. And teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, watch this. I am with you always to the end of the age. I'll never leave you nor forsake mm, you. Amen. So we place our confidence with Christ. We're identified with him and we believe that we have authority with him. Yes. When we believe that we have authority with him, because Ephesians says that we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We're literally seated in the spirit realm. The born-again spirit that we have because we confess Christ is simultaneously seated with Christ, in Christ, on God's throne. So what does this look like on Monday? All right. So right? now, what weapons do we have? So we have our beautiful daughter, Maria. Yeah. You know, grew up in foster care, 16 homes, lived right. with us. There was a moment where she would be in her room and we could just feel the darkness yeah. attacking her. Yeah. And she was dressing in all black and would have hair in her face and her sweaters were this long. And in she, it was just, yeah, with a hoodie. It was just this like darkness, yeah. depression, yeah. you know, and H hating on herself, saying things. No one's ever going to love me. I'm unworthy of love and suicidal thoughts. I mean, it was bad. Yeah. And I remember you were like, I'm going in. <laughs> I'm going in there. I'm going in. <laughs> and you went into her room. She's in the dark. Blinds were down. It was so dark in her room. She was just sitting on the floor. Rocking. Rocking. With these evil thoughts. Rehearsing the evil thoughts over and over and over. Demonic. So what are you doing? Yeah, you said, not in this house. And he turned on all the lights. Nope. No, nope. I opened we're gonna, up all the blinds. I said, all this sunlight's going to come in. We're going to help you fight. Get out of my room. No, nope, not in this house. We love you, and you're called by God, and there's a plan over your life. Get out of my room. Nope. And he's, he's putting on worship music real loud. Yeah. We're going to help you pray, and we're going to help you worship. <laughs> no. And she, we started to sing, and yes. she, couldn't, she couldn't sing. And we said, you know this song? This is your favorite song? <laughs> Sing and I can't, I can't. And, and we, so, I lifted one arm, he lifted, lifted the other, the other we arm, were Aaron and we and her. worshipped. And she, we with her, her and she, through her breakthrough. And we, and and I think the, we praised, we praised through the breakthrough. And she began eventually to mouth the words along with us, and she eventually started to and there was sing those songs, and and something broke, something snapped. Yes. And what we were doing in prayer and in praise were we were reminding her of who she is in Christ. Yes. We were reminding her of where she's seated with Christ. Yes. We were reminding her of her identity, her, her power, authority. and her and authority. Come on. Because we saw the call of God on her life. Right. We knew the destiny God had for her. Right. But the enemy wanted her so down and stuck and oppressed. So now this is where it gets interesting. Because... Berea was believing the lie instead of holding on to the truth. We got to spend some time and talk about that someday. But I want to run through that as an example of the weapons of our warfare. Yes. So from our base scripture, we're looking at Ephesians 6. And from 12, I read, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, 
but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the causing powers. So now think of that in the context of everything we just said. Over this present darkness, do we not know that the world is actually over a dark, is, a, is under a darkness? Jesus came in and penetrated the darkness by, with himself, the light. And the light couldn't overtake it. That's what we read in John, right? And so us have been planted with new light. And we're shining in the darkness as well. The world has fallen, but we are beams of light. Mm. <clears throat> and so our, war is all, our wrestle is also against, the, it, this is another way of saying it, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, Paul writes to the saints of Ephesus, take up the whole armor of God. The whole armor. So this is, this is warfare talk. Right. Armor. Armor is for people who are in battle. Yeah. That you may be able to withstand. Withstand is a warfare term of standing your ground. Yeah. Because in there's, the, there's something coming there's against There's something you. trying to push up against yeah. us. Yeah. Right? In, w to withstand in the evil day. So there, it's not one day. It's a, it's a term of like the whole time period, of <clears> the <throat> age. <clears throat> and it's also speaking of in times where it gets really rough. It's both and. Mm -hmm. And having done all to stand firm, stand therefore. Remember what I said about therefore, everything I just said because of the spiritual warfare. Stand therefore, having fastened the belt of truth. Truth. So this is this, this, this armor and it's all held together by truth. We have to stand on truth. We have to be girded with truth, even when it hurts. Yes. And this is a big issue in our day and age. Yes. Because be truth is, it's just whatever you want it to be. Truth has become relative. Yeah. And absolute truth or a truth is, is not. And that's a lot. Because if there are, if there are almost 9 billion people or 7.8 billion people, there cannot be that many different truths right. coexisting all at once. Right. We could have different opinions and we can have different ex subjective experiences, but that doesn't speak to the truth. So... I want to affirm Christians, stand up for the truth. Wear the truth as a belt. If you don't got your truth on, your pants are down. Well. And a lot of Christians' pants are down. Yep. Because they don't want to stand for the truth, so they're tripping over their pants. Because they're oh. trying to maneuver through the world and its ways, and they're not standing on the word of truth. <laughs> hey, uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> we got to be girded on truth. Yes. Even when it hurts. And you know what? This world will try to pit us against each other. We're going to hold on to these principles, and we're going to hold on to these principles, and y'all fight against each other. That's how the enemy conquers. He divides and conquers. They're all wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call you all out, mm -hmm. and I'm going to stand on God's truth. And you're going to become my enemy, and you're going to become my enemy. Oh, but guess what? The enemies are not the flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. It's these principalities on this side and these principalities working them on that side, fighting against each other. And I'm going to be the word of truth because the word of God goes between bone and marrow, soul and spirit to divide and get and to yes. plant the truth. Yes. That's, yes. that's Hebrews chapter four. So gird yourself with the truth. And the number one truth is Jesus is Lord. Amen. God reigns. This is all his. And that his word is truth. And the word of God is truth because he, he associates himself with the Bible. He associates himself with the words that are coming out of God's mouth mm -hmm. as truth. All right. My bad. Not my bad. My good. <laughs> Jesus is good. And having put on the breastplate of righteousness. This is a big one. Because Talk about it. we want to do whatever we want. And we don't have victory because we don't have private victory. We want to have the breastplate of righteousness. Our righteousness does not come from ourselves. It comes from Jesus. And then he empowers us with a divine nature. Come on. To do his will. Born again in a completely different nature. Yes. Holy and spiritual. Yes. And it is our righteousness. Yes. Because at the cross, this is why we need the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I'm only going to teach Christ and him crucified. Why? Because that is the power of the gospel. Romans 1.16, 1, 116, right? That I believe in the gospel for it is the power of God 
unto righteousness for all those who would believe, first unto the Jew by whom the word of God was given, and then into the Gentile as the light unto the world and all those who would be saved. If we don't stand on the gospel, if we don't stand on the word of truth, we have, we've lost our righteousness. Oh. Je- because in the, at the cross, we exchanged our sin because we're sinful. We're the ones who sinned and rebelled against God even before we knew him. And from the foundation of the world, he died for us so that we could exchange sin for righteousness. For his righteousness. His righteousness. Mm-hmm. So when the devil comes at you and lies to you, you ain't righteous. You ain't nothing. You ain't like, nobody. Like, yep, I got Christ's righteousness. I am through him. I, I am through Christ's him. I have Christ's righteousness. Right. I am righteous in the eyes of God. I don't need to be righteous in your eyes. Right. Oh, I know what you did. It's all covered under the blood. Right. And that doesn't give us license to be unrighteous. Come on. No, it Can actually... <laughs> Say it again. It actually gives us the license to be righteous in Christ. We have the power now. We have the power now. We could not be righteous before. We would have been self-righteous, but dirty before God. Right. But, okay. So let's keep we done going. Beat it so truth, down. righteousness, truth, what else? righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness, and the shoes... Or the sandals as for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. The idea here is that we're, we're standing on the gospel. We're standing on the gospel for the readiness of the gospel of peace as shoes. So that we walk in the, we walk in the truth. Mm-hmm. We walk in our righteousness. And if you think about what the purpose of shoes are is so that we can walk on the ground firmly. And you can't go nowhere without shoes, right? So you got to, it, it means you're ready. You're ready to go. You're, you're ready, ready to, to go, go where God wants you to go with the truth, with his word, with the gospel. What Readiness. else? Mm-hmm. Having put on, I said that, in all circumstances, taking up the shield of faith. That's a huge one. With which you can extinguish the flaming darts of the evil one. Because we've got to put up that shield because the enemy is going to throw stuff at us. He's going to throw those lies. And how do we quench those lies? By faith. My righteousness is in God. I believe it by faith. Let me tell you something. There's going to be days you don't feel it. Yeah. There's going to be days that you doubt the fact of it. That you doubt the fact of it. We don't live by faith. And we don't live by facts. Facts can change. Wait, say that again. We don't live by. We don't. So, thank you. Thank you. We don't live by feelings and we don't live by facts. We live by faith. When the facts match up, because we, facts are is what's collected until we can see the whole picture. But we can't see the whole picture yet. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's going to look like the facts don't line up. You know, for years, archaeologists have been saying that the facts don't line up. The Bible is not true. All of a sudden, there's a bunch of facts coming out that like, oh, we found out where the children of Israel crossed over the sea. We, feel you, we see where all the, uh, uh, the, the chariots and, and all the things of the Egyptians are in the lake of Aqaba. Oh, we found where Mount Sinai is. Oh, we found where Sodom and Gomorrah are. Hmm. But uh, like 50 years ago, 100 years ago, we didn't have this. Mm-hmm. And so the facts weren't matching up. So when the facts don't match up, mm-hmm. when your feelings are not there, yeah. you live by faith. Live by and faith. faith is a shield. When we live by faith, the lies of the enemy, they fall off. They yeah. fall off. They yeah. don't hit. And take the helmet of salvation that protects the way you think. Right. Yes. Protects the way you think. Amen. These are reiterations of the same concept, right? Because we're not actually wearing anything. Yeah. But it's ways of conceptualizing the armor that we wear. Yes. Under righteousness, under the blood of Jesus Christ, seated in heavenly places, holding on to the truth. These things, they protect our thinking. Yeah. Right? It protects blows to the head because there's a battlefield of the mind. Right. And I think that that's really important too is because I feel like we may think that maybe the enemy will just come through circumstances, but many times he comes through thoughts that you think are your own. Right. And, you know, I'm just not good enough, and I'm just not, you know. I'm and, just not happy. Right. And the enemy will come. Even moving to Florida, 
Like, I just felt like we were dealing with demonic, lustful spirits out here. And it turns out? Hedonism. Like, this is like, that's, Miami's that's, like, do what you, do you, boo, do you. That's the evil spiritual, spiritual principality that seems to be really influential in this part of the nation. And it's everywhere. I know it's everywhere. But it just feels to be... Heightened. Heightened. Yes. Here. And... And we were starting to feel, even in our own marriage, crazy thoughts, crazier temptations. And it was like, what the heck is going on here? Right. I remember us being in a tiff, uh, some heated fellowship, right? And usually I'll just go pray, you know, and just be like, it's going to be all right. You know, we'll work this out. I'm upset. But it was like I felt these thoughts of like, man, don't you wish you could just do you? Don't you wish you could just do what pleases you, man, like do what you want. Mm. You don't got to cook. You don't got to clean. You don't got to wash clothes. You don't got to take care of nobody. You don't got to take care of your kids. Battlefield of the mind. You don't you just wish you could just leave. And I remember being like, whoa, no, I'm going to leave my family. Like it, it was so far from any thoughts I ever had. Right. But it felt so real and so strong. It was, intense. it was intense. And I'm like, man, am I tripping right now? Hmm. And it, and then that's when you have to identify the enemy. Right. I'm like, this is demonic. Yeah. This is demonic. And what did you do? <clears throat> I started to resist the enemy. The Bible says in James chapter four, submit to God and resist the enemy. And I was like, I resist this thought right so you now. You said that out loud. I said it out loud. Okay, let me pause, because the next one says, and take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word, which of, God. Is the word of God. Yes. So you did warfare with the by word. communicating James chapter four. You, you, you read the word. Yes. You recited it. You had it in memory. Yep. And you used it as, a, as an offensive weapon. Against the lies of the enemy. Yes. So continue. And it's what Jesus did too when right. he was battling with the enemy. Right. In the he wilderness. He said, it is written. And then he said it. Yes. And, and so. And the enemy came back and he said, well, it is written. Because the devil knows the Bible too. But the Lord stuck by faith and the word of God. Right. And also gave some more. Right. And he had to flee. I will not leave my family. And I started crying because I could called it out exactly feel what it was. Like in the room, like just imagine it, just imagine it, wow. it's, just imagine it, just you don't got to do it, just imagine it. And I'm like, no, mm. you know, like I was like, I rebuke the spirit, mm. but we, we, we can't just be like, I rebuke the devil. No, no, no. Specific, Go into the direct, word. Yes. I'm like, I'm a child of God. I love my family. I love my husband. He is the head of this home. I love my children. My children are a blessing. They're an inheritance. I'm just quoting scripture. You put the word, of, you know, the, the belt of truth on. Yes. You, you were quoting scripture. You re-identified yourself with Christ. You remembered your authority with Christ. Yes. And I was like, and then I could finally, as I'm resisting, then I could feel the spirit of God come and say, the enemy wants you off your post to leave your home and destroy your family and destroy the call of God on you guys. Mm. And I'm like, whoa. And it was for the first time I felt this is what women go through when they straight leave the crib. Because I would hear stories like that. She just, my mom just left us. I'm like, how could a mother do that? Mm -hmm. That's just... Or men too, Beca men right? Just, because there are some I don't real, no more. I'm out of here. ugly, demonic it's an excuse for them to do what they want to do in their flesh. Spirits to do whatever they want to do, and then the Lord said, and then we, these women and men leave their family, and then the devil turns around and goes, "I can't believe you did that," and then and then makes condemns them, them right? and says, "You're not a real Christian." Because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And you know what you should do? You should just. Give up on, on your faith. Give up on Jesus because you, you're not a real Christian. And then they give it all up altogether. And that's what you're talking about, falling away. Yes. They give up the faith. So that leads into the last point. You kind of already answered it. How do we keep the victory in spiritual warfare? 
and pretty much it's going back to knowing who you are in Christ. Yep. And your, th- your identity. Your identity your in Christ. Your authority. Right. No, recognizing your position and your role, the authority that you have with them, and knowing what your weapons were, and in this case, that you utilize the word of God, the sword of the spirit. Yeah. And then we didn't say this outright, but it says here, praying at all times in the spirit Mm -hmm. with all prayer and supplication. And so you turned what was an attack against you into a prayer of an attack against back against them. And then you asked and you prayed to God to reestablish you as a wife in your mind. Yeah. And my post as a wife and a mom and my role as the woman who builds her home, not tears it down. Right. And I came to you and shared it with you. And I said, we now need to fight because in Ephesians and we prayed together, it says two is better than one. And a three braided. Sorry. Thank you. Ecclesiastes, a three braided cord is strong, is not easily easily broken. broken. And it says when two come together, they can fight together. Right. And I said, babe, we got to fight this together. And right. we did. Right. And it was powerful. Amen. I think we can revisit this mm-hmm. because we are talking about spiritual warfare and we're giving some really good equipment. I'm going to plant a seed for a future talk. What about people who have fallen really bad? How do they get back up? How do they guard their minds? How do they regain victory? That's a great question. And we did, we do have a, a podcast. We will have a podcast on that. Right. I've fallen and now what? I've fallen <laughs> and I can't get up. But we can though. But we can though. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. But we can though. All right, guys. Well, listen, so. this was our conversation about spiritual warfare. We wanted to answer the question in our day and age with all these strange things happening and we see like evil everywhere, what in the world is going on? It's spiritual warfare. It is. So what is spiritual warfare? And why is there spiritual warfare? And who are our enemies in spiritual warfare? How do we fight the spiritual warfare? And how do we keep our victory? Yeah. So we just went through all of that. If you have any questions, please hit us up. Visit cdandmelody.com. Sign up with our newsletter. Email us. Hit us up with the questions. Throw out some comments. Um, on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, hit subscribe. Hit like. Hit the uh, notification. Notification bell. Share this with others. Please. Talk about it with others. Yeah. You know, watch this with a group Let's of people. Let's not make spiritual warfare weird and awkward in the dark. Bring it to the light. And help each other fight. And mm, bring it to the light. And help each other fight. Hey. Bring it to the light hey. and help each other fight. Hey. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for watching. We love you. We're here for you. Yes. We're for you. Amen. And so um, please join us, partner with us, pray for us, share this message. Make sure you subscribe to all platforms. And um, now let's keep this message going. And, and come join the ministry with us, partner with us. Uh, go to our website, hit the donate page. It'll take you to Fire International. You can partner with us financially one time or ongoing monthly gifts, join in the work, join in the mission. We want to get more of the word out CD and melody hanging with the Fabians. Peace.